This is Paul Heineken. Good afternoon. I hope you're still fresh for the next uh, six, seven minutes and the rest of the presentations. Um, what have we been doing since this all started? The carbon footprinting, the labeling that we saw coming up, and that is basically part of the presentation. Well, for the Germans, Heineken is well known outside Germany. It's a beer producer present in many countries. And that is basically also why we like harmonization, because we want the same methodology in all countries. Um, now you can see Germany, we have a small joint venture somewhere hidden, but we skip that. We've been working on the carbon footprint based on uh, the past 2050, the first initiatives in Tesco, the French labeling scheme. And basically we developed it in line with the GRI and our own interpretation of what was wrong and right and what was relevant or not. And we built it into what we call the carbon footprint model. And basically our goal was basically internal. We wanted to inform our managers worldwide of what's good and what's bad and where they need to address the risks. Um, so it seems very obvious, but it is not. Basically, if you make a good decision, then the carbon footprint should go down. And if you take a wrong decision, then your carbon footprint should go up. And that is one of the simple issues that we found very relevant. Uh, instead of uh, cradle to grave, we have named our supply chain barley to bar. It's, it's a much nicer... <laughs> uh, we, we believe in positive messages. We, we start with agriculture, where we cultivate the barley and the hops. Then we have malting plants, where we convert the barley into malt. Then we have beverage production. We put it into packagings. We distribute, we export. And then in the consumer phase, the beer needs to be cooled. So that is barley to bar. S simple to remember. OK, next one. How does our model work? I will not read the entire sheet. You can find it in the handout, but the, the key elements. We have uh, basically scope and boundaries that are relevant for us. So that means that sometimes we add processes that are nowhere in the literature or in LCAs, like byproducts, recycling, or third-party wastewater treatment, because we think these issues are relevant to address, so we take them on board. We want information and not necessarily low numbers. That's the key issue. Um, second, we prepared questionnaires and we've sent it to uh, 24 countries. And I lost many friends in these uh, brewery operations because it was an amazingly detailed questionnaire. A lot of effort to fill in. Uh, activity data, how much bottles did you buy, what uh, beer did you put in, where did you sell it, what was the weight of the bottle, the color, and so on and so on. Same for cans, malt, sugar, sorghum, and so on. Uh, we validated the replies. Uh, we checked if the beer fitted in the bottles or that there was a missing quantity, and that's how we controlled data quality. And then we combine our activity data from two with our set of emission factors, uh, the, the grid electricity values, but also the emission factors for glass, the recycling energy for aluminum, and so on, and so on. And basically, in red, you see the highlights that basically we need to understand what the emission factor really is. It is not one average number, but it's a mix of good and bad performers. And also key for us, we go for primary data for the critical areas because we think that the difference between good and bad suppliers is the key element of improvement. As an example, we use malt. So a malting plant uses energy. It's not so difficult to convert that into CO2 emissions. Only one minute. That goes fast. <laughs> Basically, we see good performers with a low emission and we see bad performers with a high one. So Transparent primary data is what we need. And then we need to stop using the bad suppliers. This is on the internet also. It's our donut, the carbon footprint. You can read it clockwise, agriculture, brewery, sp split into three. Packaging, the main element of the rest of my story today. And then we have distribution and cooling. And it totals to 68 kilograms per hectoliter, which means one beer is one kilometer by car. 
Um, we made this for several countries. Brazil, cooling is low because the electricity grid is green. And for the people from Burundi, Burundi has a very low impact on packaging because the market is basically returnables. And the next one, ambitions. Well, we have an improvement program for our own operations for cooling and distribution. Cooling has been said by Jim, basically you know where to work on, take a practical approach and save energy. Packaging, a big issue. Supplier efficiency is key. The packaging design is the next element. And third, we need to recycle. And then to connect a bit to the recycling allocation chosen by the European Union PEF, we also favor the 50-50 approach because it's applicable for all materials in all countries. And basically, you can also see how it works if you produce the glass in the Netherlands and you use it in France, you would get this result by A divided by 2 and B divided by 2. If the same bottle would be sold in Greece, then the impact is higher because in Greece, the recycling rate of glass is much lower than it is in France. So that all makes sense, and that is why we like the A plus B divided by two. So you can say this was an efficient build all, but we used it in the wrong market. <laughs> and basically that is, in a nutshell, my five, six minutes. <laughs> yeah?